Good morning, everybody. Uh, we will begin the zoning administrator meeting for this morning. Uh, and I'm calling the meeting to order. The first item of business is approval of the November 16, 2023 draft minutes. I reviewed those minutes and find that they accurately reflect, reflect what occurred at that meeting. So I hereby approve those minutes. The next item is public comment. This is the time when any person may address matters not listed on this agenda, but which are within the subject matter of the jurisdiction. The public may comment on agenda items when the item is called and each speaker is allowed three minutes. Is there anybody wishing to speak on an item that is not on the agenda today? Seeing none, we're moving on to the statement of purpose. The zoning administrator is appointed by the Director of Planning and Economic Development Department and has a responsibility and authority to conduct public meetings and hearings and to act on applications for minor or reduced review authority projects or entitlements. A determination or decision by the zoning administrator may be appealed to the appeal body, including the Design Review Board, Cultural Heritage Board, Planning Commission, or City Council as applicable to the decision. Since there are no zoning administrator reports, we'll move on to uh, and there's no consent items, we'll move on to um, item 6.1, which is a scheduled item. And Planner Hartman. Thank you, Zoning Administrator Tumians. My name is Suzanne Hartman, and I am presenting the conditional use permit application for a fence that is located within a side corner setback. Let me present. There we go. <laughs> All right, at 4740 Badger Road. So it's the applicant is seeking approval of a six foot tall wood fence that is located within the 15 foot side corner setback. This is an aerial view of the uh, project site. And this is kind of a closer view. Um, as you can see here, this is not where the current fence is. This is where the uh, previously existing fence was, just for clarification. The general plan land use designation is low density residential and the zoning district is R16, which is single family. The R1 zoning district is applied to areas of the city intended to be maintained as residential neighborhoods comprised of detached and attached single family houses, clustered residential hillside projects and small multifamily projects together with compatible accessory uses. It implements and consists with and is consistent with the very low density um, and low density residential um, classifications of the general plan. The surrounding areas um, are zoned as low residential as well as planned development, um, as you can kind of see here in the, uh, the north, northeast. Uh, the PD district or planned, de planned development district is intended to recognize the, and a, the advantage that integrated community offers over conventional zoning techniques and implementing general plan goals through specific site developments. The planned development district is specifically envisioned as a mechanism to preserve and or create distinctive high quality single or mixed use developments that meet or exceed the goals of the general plan. And the property is also adjacent to a school to the uh, west of the development as well. These are existing elevation photos of the fence here, as you can see um, of this wood design. Um, at the highest maximum of six feet. These are the proposed plans. Um, as you can see here, kind of at the top portion, um, they have proposed to uh, take away some of that horizontal siding to kind of create more transparency um, and not have the fence kind of dominate that uh, uh, elevation or that facade, I should say. The review authority may approve or deny an application for a conditional use permit or minor conditional use permit approval. The review authority shall record the decision and the findings on which the decision is based. The review authority may approve a conditional use permit, uh, or I should say minor conditional use permit for additional uh, height in uh, a setback, um, as long as the following findings can be made. And these are the uh, findings continued. 
staff was able to make all of the findings and you can view the detailed findings in the attached resolution. There are also additional fence height findings. And again, staff was able to make all of the fence height findings um, that also can be viewed in the resolution. The project has been found in compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act and qualifies for a class three exemption under CEQA guidelines section 15303 subsection E and that the proposed fence is an accessory structure. So there were, I, I would like to clarify um, on this slide that there was uh, an open code enforcement case uh, for this residence and it was determined that the case um, could be closed um, as long as a minor conditional use permit was obtained for the fence. Um, I also would like to clarify that on the notice um, in the description, I had written that the fence was located in both the side corner and the front setback, but it is, um, that is not correct. It is just within the side corner setback. Um, the front, the required front setback is 15 feet from the uh, property line. Um, and that portion of the fence that is long, um, I believe it's pronounced SD's mm. road, um, is 15. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that as well. Um, I did receive a couple of public comments. Um, most of them were in favor of the fence. They were um, pleased with the design um, and location. Um, there was one comment that did not, or there was some concern about uh, visibility um, from going in and out of that corner. Um, and the applicant did provide, um, or the applicant did confirm that the fence is located without, uh, outside of the vision triangle. So it is recommended by the planning and economic development department that the zoning administrator by resolution approve a minor conditional use permit to allow a six foot tall wood fence located within the 15 foot side corner setback at 4740 Badger Road. And the applicant is here in person if you do have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Planner Hartman. Um, uh, opening up the public comment period, um, the, is the applicant like to state anything else for the record or anything to add? I think he's not at this time. Okay. And is the, um, the landscaping that was shown, um, is that installed or that will be installed? That's in progress. Oh, okay. It will be. Okay. Okay. And is there anyone else in the public that would like to speak about this proposed uh, fence legalization? If you're attending in person, you'd like to make a comment, go ahead and raise your hand. Seeing none, I'll cl close the public comment period. Um, Planner Hartman, um, are there other fences that are similar in this neighborhood? There are other fences in this neighborhood that that are in their position of the closer yeah. on Badger. Yep. Okay. Okay. I do find that the fence is a very attractive design, and I like that um, with the removal of some of the uh, planks, it will look less fortress-like and more um, um, more transparent. It, it acts like lattice almost, but more modern. Um, and it is a very attractive design and it's outside of the clear vision triangle. So it's not a, a hazard to people walking or driving. So, um, and there weren't any objections from the neighbors besides <clears throat> the concern with the vision triangle. Okay. So because of those and because um, Planner Hartman was able to make all the necessary findings and I'm able to make the necessary findings, um, I'll approve the uh, fence with the Revised design with the uh, planks removed for transparency at the top. And um, can you, con is there a condition for a landscaping to soften the? Um, I can add that. Okay. I don't think there there is one. Okay. We plan to do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It looks, I think it'll look nicer. With, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, and less graffiti, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So with that and with the added condition for um, some soft landscaping, I'll approve the fence as proposed. So thank you for attending. <laughs> thank you. What about appeal? Oh yes, and um, if there's anybody listening in the room or on Zoom, there is a 10 day appeal period. Um, 
uh, appeal has to be submitted by de December 18th. And if it's appealed, it would be heard before the planning commission. So after 10 days, your permit is valid. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Planner Hartman. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item 6.2, food for thought food bank, conditional use permit, 2351 circadian wave planner. Okay. Thank you, zoning administrator Tumians. Um, like you said, this is a minor conditional use permit um, proposed at 2351 circadian way for food for thought food bank. Um, food for Thought is a nonprofit that um, gathers food materials and assembles meals for folks who are experiencing medical conditions. Um, so from an operations standpoint, this is a really good site for this type of land use because it's in an industrial area. Um, the zoning district is business park, which generally is for more of the light industrial uses, and that is very appropriate. Um, district for this type of land use because there wouldn't be any heavy machinery. Um, a traffic study was prepared and is included as attachment four. Um, that concludes there would not be a significant um, increase beyond the previous tenant, um, which I believe was a um, cannabis use. I could be mistaken, but the uh, traffic study, like I said, is attachment four. Um, Madam McKay, would you mind sharing your screen for the oh. Yeah, Only public. sorry. <laughs> and posterity, see. I guess. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so here you see the aerial um, view full screen. View full screen. That's okay. I guess we can still see it. Um, so adjacent to the west is um, uh, undeveloped planned development district um, zoning district, which is the former it's a former airport and runway site. And the reason that this industrial use in an industrial area requires a minor conditional use permit is because the code requires this type of approval for this land use when proposed adjacent to residentially zoned parcels. Mm -hmm. And for all intents and purposes, um, I think it's reasonable to conclude that it will be uh, a great, though it, this, this site to the west is, like I said, a former airport and runway. So um, I think I would be surprised to see any residential development in this area anytime soon. However, even if there was residential development, even very close to the property line, um, the project, like I said, is not an intensive industrial use um, would comply with the noise ordinance, no heavy machinery or, or traffic. Um, and then related to the California Environmental Quality Act, um, this project ex is exempt from the act pursuant to guideline sections 15183 in that the use is consistent with the general plan um, and as, as conditioned would not be um, impactful to the environment or the surrounding land uses. Um, there's some minor tenant improvements, but otherwise everything that is needed for the use is already at the building related to access and utilities and things of that nature. So um, I think that's, that's all I've got. And I'm happy to answer any questions and the applicant representative is attending as well for any questions. Thank you, Planner McKay. Um, opening up the public uh, comment period or pu pu public comment. Um, would the applicant like to add anything to Connor's <laughs> presentation? Connor, hit them all. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Planner McKay, what are the uh, proposed hours of operation? Um, let's see. I guess for the distribution is what I'm asking. Um, So each Tuesday through <laughs> whoever wants to answer. It's oh, if you if you've got it, I have it right here. But 
Yeah, go ahead. So according to the um, project description, it says each Tuesday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., food for thought clients can come to pick up their pre-ordered grocery bags, totaling approximately 12 clients per day. Um, and then weekly deliveries um, from semi-trucks, just the, the food products themselves. And then do you have anything else to add to that? No, it's just the delivery drivers, but they're also limited in between hours. They're only there for four hours a day. They come in, pick up the groceries, and then they deliver. So, so not that, super early and not super early. You know, <laughs> nobody comes in prior to eight. Okay, got it. Um, cool. Nobody's there after five. <clears throat> and zoning administrator, um, just for the record, there are no attendees available to make public comment, and okay. so there are none. Okay. <clears throat> so with that, I'll close the public comment and... Um, I find that the use is compatible. I, I read the zoning code and distribution is permitted when it's ancillary to a primary, other primary use, which this is. And um, it seems like uh, even if the residential uh, PD were to develop that it would be, it would still remain compatible because it's not open super late or super early. Um, and you're occupying an existing tenant space and because of that, um, I'll move to approve um, conditional use permit CUP 23-056 Food for Thought Food Bank at 2351 Circadian Way. And there, uh, this action is subject to appeal by December 18th and would go before the Planning Commission if it was appealed. So with that and seeing there are no other items, I will adjourn the zoning administrator meeting. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Connor.